the Jesuit, what, one thing that interests me is the, the venues in Germany, Holland, that, that area, because the, the impression I get is they're much stronger than the music venues, sort of small local venues in, in England, and under less pressure as well. Well, I'm, I may not be the best person because this is the first tour I will have done in, in England, in UK. So I don't really know what the, the clubs are like here. I think that, you know, you, the folks that go to them are, are sitting here besides me, so maybe Jim or Gabby can say something about that. Gosh. <laughs> Um, I think there's been a sharp decline in the number of venues in the UK. Um, I think there's lots of things, financial factors, and uh, we, I was actively pursuing a gig for Joseph uh, that was going to be near Portsmouth, and uh, it was nearly in, in the bag. Um, and then the guy contacted me and said the landlord had decided to sell the venue to turn it into apartments because it was more money in that. So it's all those sort of pressures. And um, I did a tour for a friend of mine, US friend of mine, uh, called Jack Williams back in 2000 and again 2002 2004 and there were a lot of the venues I used then have, have since gone um, and others have come along but it's difficult to get access in, into them at times um, a lot of them won't take the chance on a, a, a musician they haven't heard of so that's what made it so difficult to try and get, get uh, slots for, for Joseph this time round so we're really hoping that this will spread the word a little bit and we'll yeah. make it a bit easier next year when, when we, we do this again. I had a, a long discussion with a promoter who runs a venue in Birmingham and he was very much, well, who's going to come? You know, who is going to come out on a Wednesday night or whenever to, go and, to come and see this guy? You know, because where's his publicity? Where's the? Where's his? How's he seen over here? And it, and, it, and it is you're up against that as well. So it's this is a, a dip in the water. It's in dipping the toe into the water here. So it's, it's so it's, so when you went to so you've been to Germany and the Netherlands as well. Yeah. And so what what's your impression of music venues there? Well. Um, I guess I was only looking at them from a point of view of a, of a, a listener, you know, a, a, an audience member. Um, the places we went to were small, friendly, but listening venues, places where the uh, artists would be the focus of attention. It wasn't like they were standing at the side of a pub playing away to people's backs while they're drinking and talking and having fun. Um, people were sitting, listening, and, and uh, really enjoying the music, which is something that is really important, I think. Um, mm. I think it's quite difficult for new artists um, in this country. I, don't, I can't really speak for Europe because I haven't that much, much experience of it, but in this country quite often you'll get a really great musician and he's practically playing away to himself. He'll be lucky if people turn around and applaud at the end of a, a number, which seems, seems to me a real shame. But, but at the end of the day, Exeter has got a very, a very good scene going at, at the Certainly moment. Has, with, yeah. there's, you know, there's people putting on gigs in Exeter. It's not just here in the Phoenix, but there are smaller venues. There's a guy called Simon Twiggs is putting on gigs uh, at Hope Hall. Twiggs and gigs. Twig, Twiggs gigs. <laughs> look it up. Um, and he's, he's taken a chance, and he's, there's Hope Hall in Heavetry area that he puts gig, gigs, gigs on there. And you know, it needs people to come along, because if people don't attend, then at the end of the day, those gigs won't be happening. And there's a whole scene with secret gigs going on in Exeter. There's a guy, guy called Greg Hancock, who people may have may have may have heard around here. He he's putting on these, and it's just trying to get find venues to get people to come along and sing to a listening audience. Uh, but at the end of the day, people need to attend because if it's use it or lose it, I'm afraid. And um, so we're very pleased that at the moment, ticket sales are going really well for for yeah, solid, gigs, yeah. Saturday night. You know. So just to explain that, explain that a bit more. So the, how many tickets are left, do you think? Um, a handful, literally a handful of tickets. So about ten? Not even that, five. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so for the, ben quick if for, the benefit, for the benefit of Folly <laughs> FM listeners, yeah. of whom there are 27 <laughs> at least... <laughs> I know, will it? Yeah, sorry, Chris is here now. 2,700. Yeah, two th yeah there, are, there are at least 7,000 people listening to Folly FM at the moment. Fantastic. Well, and um, there's only five tickets left. Yeah, so on this occasion there are only five tickets left. Oh, yeah. However, so the, the gig in Launceston at Number 8 Cafe in Launceston which is only a 45 minute drive away to be and fair. it's a great venue great venue they have quite a few tickets left um, so and that's Friday evening Friday the 1st 
It's not. It's. I'm not fooling you. It really is <laughs> Friday the first of April. A gig at number eight Launce, uh, Cafe Launceston, and she has a few gigs left down. There, a few tickets left down there. So, um, if you want to hear this guy, which I highly recommend that you do, um, yeah, get in touch with them. Um, they're also on wegottickets.com as well. So, check it out. Well, Joseph, if you just put the mic, mic back to Joseph, I'd, well, I'd, I'd like you to comment, may, maybe now or maybe, maybe later, just to, just how you find the difference. Because I know um, Captain Gallows of a band called The Pirates, who used to be in Devon, and he's now got a Dutch crew, and they seem to be based in, in, in Holland now. Or, and uh, he speaks very highly of the venues in, in Germany and in all that area. He says it's much easier to get gigs. Well, you know, people ask me this question quite often, actually, and my references to the States versus Europe or versus Germany and na name the country. I, I think that I generally have a sense that it's basically all the same. It's I have a following in some of the European countries, so therefore I go into a certain level of venue that's going to be a higher quality venue than when, when, when I'm trying to play in a place where nobody knows me where because it, it is it comes down to economics to some degree because the venues have to pay for their lights and their food and, the, and, the, and all, all the things that make a venue a venue and unless I'm bringing people out unless people know who I am they're not going to come out so when they do I can play in a better places and so I think in the end um it's basically the same because a professional venue is a professional venue people know what good sound is they know when they feel comfortable and safe in a venue where it's it's supporting the music and supporting the art that's happening there and that can be at all levels um so i've been fortunate to have a record company that's been very supportive and helped got, get my name out there so i've i've been there to, for fans to discover me and and it's been very supportive. So that's what I think about it. I don't I don't think it's really any different anywhere. You know, people a lot. It's funny because the Americans talk about oh man, but in Germany, you know, they they give you hotel rooms or they give you dinner and they give you breakfast and all these things. And I'm like, well, yeah, but they do the same thing in the states too. We're paying for it. The artist always pays for everything. You know, they, they oh yeah, but they give you dinner. But I paid for that. Hmm. So nobody's giving anybody anything. The, the the only difference that I notice is that there are a lot more cultural venues that are government funded. They have a lot more money to fund the the culture venues, which is not so many of them, but there are there, and they're wonderful to play because it's a first class to first class affair, and it's always professional. But m sometimes not the best places to play. But just ge in general, that's about the only difference. There is more government support of the arts than we have in America. I don't know what it's like here. It's probably more like it is in the States. Here is, is what I keep hearing. Seems to be going that way. Yeah. More and more, you know, we've never really had any government support. They took that away with Reagan. <laughs> 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 After Maplethorpe caused such a big deal with the arts, and they said, okay, great, now we can get rid of all the art supports, period. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it we sucks. digress. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one thing just, just to explain, I think we... It's, it's going on for half past 11 now, so we've got about half an hour left, but I'd like to talk... Now Chris has turned up, we'd like to talk about the uh, the Gadget Show, which is where we're heading. Nice. But, but sounds we'll, fun. We'll try and get on to that in a, in a moment or two. Before you do, can I just say a really big thank you to the uh, hosts at the Bridge Inn, Nigel and Caroline, for, for hosting us on Saturday, um, because uh, they're doing a fantastic job. And uh, long may they continue. <laughs> well, that yeah, it sounds like because they have they, they they seem to have a lot of gigs there, mm -hmm. they're, so they're putting support in for that. Yeah, it does does make a lot of sense. But would you also just mention the the Scottish gigs that you're doing? Yeah, we're playing in. Um, I guess the first show is Dundee up in. I, I you know I don't really know these areas too well, so Dundee. The first show is on on Thurs uh, Wednesday um, in Dundee. Wednesday. Something like that. Yeah. It's on the website. It's on my Wednesday, website. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm, yeah. Dundee, then Edinburgh, Edinburgh Glasgow. and then Glasgow, and then Aberdeen. That's right. And all the information is on my website, which is josephparsons.com, or you can do search, you can find stuff. But I would love it if some folks would come out. 
Let's come and say hi to me. Let me know you heard us on the radio. That's always a thrill. <laughs> that way we know directly who is listening to the radio. Exactly. <laughs> we love that. Um, I just want to reiterate, we can't come to Dundee or Dublin. Oh. What, you're not going to drive eight driving. hours away? <laughs> I don't have a car. Oh, okay. We got oh. a fast, your wheelchair looks pretty fast. <laughs> um, I might get there... Um, in a few months. <laughs> oh, put a motor on that thing. <laughs> go, you go to the gadget show. I'm sure they got something there for it. Well, that's where, that's, yeah. that's, that's where we're, we're going to explore next. JT, can we have one more one more track from the the, the CD? How about track number two? Number two. It's a little bit of a. It's an up one, and not as long. <laughs> 